Greenville County deputies say they have made an arrest in connection to a shooting on Monday that left a man in critical condition. Deputies say that 21-year-old Ivory Davis was taken into custody during a traffic stop in Spartanburg County. They say Davis and another person went to Oak Ridge at Pelham Apartments with the intent to rob the victim. During the crime, they say the man was shot. He is still hospitalized. Deputies are working to identify the other suspect. Davis is charged with attempted murder and other charges. Right now, Spartanburg County deputies are working to figure out who drove into a business in Inman and stole several pieces of equipment. The owners of Inman Lawn and Garden say someone drove into the building around 320 Monday morning and stole multiple weed eaters, cutoff saws, pressure washers and more. We're told the items are valued at nearly $8,000. The owners ask if you saw or heard anything to call authorities. In Horry County, the coroner's office says that an 18 year old has died after being rescued from the ocean last month. Officials say that Daniel Rowe from Ackworth, Georgia died on Monday after being pulled from the ocean on June 20th in Myrtle Beach. The coroner has ruled the death an accidental drowning. Now to Western North Carolina in Rutherford County. Deputies are looking for a woman who they say tried to destroy a funeral home. Here are some photos of the woman released by the Sheriff's Department. Deputies say the woman damaged the Eggers funeral home on Highway 221 in Mooresboro. They say she changed outfits several times in between doing the damage. Anyone with information is, that can help is asked to call the Sheriff's Office. And we want to update you now on a story that we brought you on WYFF News 4 at noon. Greenville County police say that a missing 13 year old boy is safe. Police say that Prince Sullivan had been gone since July 2nd. He was located the, this afternoon and again he's safe. It's a happy update there. Well now to a new way of policing. Officials say high tech drone patrols over Southern California are helping to find suspects and stop crimes. But as Ken Deliani reports, some critics worry that all of that access could compromise privacy. An eye in the sky. Helping police de-escalate gun confrontations, catch drug dealers, and put away violent criminals. About 88 to 90% of the time, the drone is first on scene before any of our officers in the field arrive. And we'll be responding east to Lincoln Boulevard. In Beachside Santa Monica, police officer Peter Lashley can survey a city block for a reported suspicious person from a command center a mile away, or zoom in to read a license plate. Last year, the drone was the only witness to a brutal assault, and its footage was used to convict one of the attackers. How have these drones changed the way your department does its work? It's a fundamental change. It allows an experienced police officer to see what's going on in real time and communicate those facts to the officers responding. They say the drone's eye view can prevent officers from overreacting. Santa Monica police got a call last year about a man with a gun. At first, drone footage appeared to confirm it, but then... As I'm watching him, I can clearly see, and you'll see he exhaled there's a little bit of smoke here in a second, that I am 99% sure that that's some type of lighter. Given that, police didn't need to approach aggressively. Drones can also help police on dangerous operations. We got a demonstration of the lemur, which SWAT teams can use to break windows and fly inside buildings, even talking to a barricaded subject. This is the police department. We're here to resolve the situation peacefully. We don't have a problem with drones being used for particular emergencies, but what we don't want to see are drones used for routine mass surveillance where they're watching everybody all the time. And we're afraid that, that this is going to lead to that. Seattle has banned the use of police drones and other communities have demanded strict rules. There are some people that are just uncomfortable with the idea of the police flying anything that could conduct overhead surveillance. We respond to calls for service. We don't utilize it as a random surveillance tool. I think as it rolls out on a national level, that's going to be incumbent upon those agencies that deploy it to be responsible with it and important for communities to keep watch on those who protect and serve. Ken Delanian, NBC News, Santa Monica. They always said you always hear that wind sound like a train, a roaring train, and that's what I started hearing. We'll take a look at storm damage left behind near a popular marina in Maryland. 
And several cities are now investigating deadly violence that happened on the 4th of July. And a little later, how to avoid what teachers call the summer slide. Cloudy skies right now in Greenville, but we're dry. I'm tracking some storms to the south, though. I'll monitor them for you straight ahead. The July 4th holiday has seen the most mass shootings than any other day in the calendar year during the past few years. We start in Shreveport, Louisiana, where police say an overnight shooting left four people dead and seven people hurt. Police say they were called to a neighborhood celebrating an annual 4th of July block party. They say they had a hard time reaching victims because all of the cars were parked right there. Officials say that this is the fourth mass shooting in Shreveport this year. So far, no word on any suspects. In Washington, D.C., officials say at least nine people were injured during a shooting overnight. Police say they were alerted to the shooting shortly before 1 a.m. They say all nine of the people injured have non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities say the shots were fired from a dark-colored SUV. So far, no arrests have been made. In Boston, five people were shot and police say they have arrested two people. Police say this happened in a neighborhood around 2.30 in the morning. They say all five of the people who were shot are expected to survive. Police say they were called to multiple locations. No word on what led up to the shootings. Boxes of fireworks were recovered as well. Today, a sentencing hearing is underway for a man who shot and killed 23 people at a Walmart store in El Paso, Texas in 2019. Back in February, the suspect pleaded guilty to 90 charges. Half of the charges are federal hate crimes. Authorities say the 24-year-old purposely carried out the shooting in order to kill immigrants who were in the area. The shooter originally pleaded not guilty, but later changed that plea after federal prosecutors said they would not seek the death penalty. However, the gunman may still get the death penalty if he is convicted on state charges. 
In Park Township, Michigan, a deadly fireworks explosion left one woman dead and nine others hurt. Today, empty fireworks cases are strewn about. Cars with windows busted out and damage to homes. That's all being assessed. Officials say that injuries range from minor to critical, and the 43-year-old woman who died had been struck by a firework. One person says that many of the neighbors shoot off fireworks almost as a friendly competition. The cause of the incident is still under investigation. In Greensboro, North Carolina, police say they found three shooting victims just before midnight on Monday. Police said a 66 and 21 year old woman died and a three year old boy was wounded in the shooting. So far, no word on a suspect or possible motive. In Wisconsin, a train derailment for several road closures. Authorities say that Canadian Pacific train derailment involving 29 cars derailed in Wisconsin. According to the Dodge County Sheriff's Office, the train was transporting wheat. There are no injuries reported and the incident is under investigation. To the weather now, a violent storm tore through the eastern shore of Maryland on Monday night. Hail, rain and powerful winds caused extensive damage and many people spent their 4th of July holiday cleaning up. Ashley Hinson reports. This is what it looks like today in Talbot County after a round of severe weather Monday night. The worst of it near Tillman Island. Down power lines and trees, boats flipped over and damaged homes. Monday night, 84 mile per hour winds were reported along with considerable sized hail. A cooler went flying up from my boat. A chair went flying up from my boat. All this crashing and stuff. Robert Marshall, the captain of a Sunset charter boat, was piloting his boat back to the dock when he says that powerful wind blew in. It, I, I was in the cabin steering and water was like suspended in the air. Like raindrops and stuff was suspended in the air inside the cabin. You couldn't tell the water from the, from the sky from anything. It was blowing that hard. Today and last night, crews like Chief William Lednam with Tillman's Volunteer Fire Department worked to clear trees from roads and public property. I sat up and looked at the window and I've never seen rain and wind come so hard. Lednam's own boat was struck by lightning. The electronics and motor damaged. Lednam says he's always hesitant about severe weather, but now he knows firsthand what it can do. They always said you always hear that wind sound like a train a roaring train and that's what I started hearing. According to emergency services, power has been restored to nearly everyone who lost it. And the Red Cross is now helping people whose homes were damaged and need a place to stay. And that part of Maryland is expected to dry out this week. Mother Nature really putting one of her own versions of the 4th of July fireworks holiday lightning and booming thunderstorms. In Coney Island, two people were actually hospitalized after a lightning strike in the area on Tuesday. Out west, it was the scorching heat that was hampering holiday festivities. High temperatures, some triple digit temperatures, fueling wildfires in Arizona and parts of Washington state. And today in the Midwest, they're bracing for gusty winds, potential hail, as well as so many of those record 50 plus million people returning from the long holiday weekend. And yesterday marked the unofficial hottest day on record for the whole world. That is according to the University of Maine's Climate Reanalyzer. NOAA will take a look at this data and make it official. The milestone comes just a day after global average temperatures topped 17 degrees Celsius for the first time in 44 years. Scientists say this will likely be the first of many records broken over the coming months. They say it is due to the combination of climate crisis and the onset of an El Nino phenomenon. Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice. Locally, though, it wasn't a record breaker, but stinking hot. Yeah, yeah, it's been hot here recently the past week, especially We've been near 90 degrees with that humidity. But June actually was one of the coolest that we've had on record, not reaching 90 degrees, which is very odd for our area. Skycam Network shows we're 83 in Greenville. It's 78 in Anderson. What's this? Well, some showers moved on through. That'll certainly help you out this time of the year. Instead of being in the upper 80s near 90, we're in the 70s there where some showers helped you out. It's sunny in Asheville at 80 degrees. I've been tracking some storms toward the south in parts of Elbert County. 
County, Abbeville, Greenwood County. It's rocking and rolling right now. And honestly, these storms are not moving a whole lot, so they just kind of have to rain themselves out, and that'll happen over the course of the next hour. Elberton, you're finally starting to see some relief, but back through Calhoun Falls and Abbeville County from Lowndesville to downtown Abbeville, we've got some heavy rain. Uptown Greenwood, you're in the clear now, but just south of you, it's rocking right now. Torrential downpours down 25 to Kirksey, Troy, Bradley, all seeing that uh, lightning and hearing that rumble of thunder as it rolls on through. We've also got those showers that rolled through Anderson to cool you down. Now in eastern Anderson County, Belt and Honey Path through Princeton into Fountain Inn, seeing some of those showers, or at least the benefit of the cooler air. It's 78 there in Clemson compared to 83 in Greenville. It's 84 in Spartanburg, 87 in Union. So where you're seeing drier conditions, uh, it's a lot hotter. Honestly, with this kind of humidity, I can't rule out the straight shower, even a rumble of thunder into the overnight hours, midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Overall, most of us will stay dry, but there is that potential. Waking up tomorrow morning, we'll start the day off in the upper 60s to around 70 degrees. It will be a quick warm up tomorrow because I expect there to be a little bit more sunshine tomorrow. It's going to be hot near 90 degrees by the afternoon with a few spotty thunderstorms. Western North Carolina, same story. It's going to be getting hot and very quickly tomorrow. We'll see temperatures go into the low to mid 80s with a chance for thunderstorms by the afternoon. Looking at high temperatures, we're actually right where we should be this time of the year. Close to 90 in the upstate, mid 80s in western North Carolina with lots of sunshine. It's going to be a nice summer day tomorrow. Let me show you the latest thunderstorm activity. So what we have over us right now, still an isolated chance into the overnight hours, but most of us stay dry until about 1, 2 o'clock tomorrow. That's when a spotty storm will form. It's going to be pop-up variety. Not everybody's going to see it. A great day out by the pool or anything you have planned. It's looking like a very nice day. As we go into Thursday evening, things simmer down and we'll see calm conditions. As we go into Friday, we'll start off with sunshine yet again, but as the day goes on, that's going to lead to some pop up thunderstorms. The heat and humidity building by three, four o'clock, we'll see that activity begin to develop yet again, and many of us will stand a chance at least seeing a storm through early Friday evening, but the rest of the evening looks nice and that kick starts a nice start to our weekend. Speaking of, if you're heading toward the lake this weekend, looking very nice, we'll have some sunshine both days, but each afternoon, just keep an eye on the sky. There will be those thunderstorms storms that will form each day toward the beach. If you're going toward the coast, it looks like we could have stormy conditions at time from Charleston to Myrtle Beach. High temperatures will be hot in the upper 80s to around 90 degrees with a good chance for thunderstorms each afternoon. So the four day looks like this topping out near 90 degrees the next two days with pop up storms going into the weekend. Not looking too bad. We do have a better chance for some rain showers, especially late Sunday going into Sunday night and that'll linger into Monday as well. And temperatures may come back down just a little bit. It's only a few degrees, but instead of being near 90 will probably be in the mid to upper 80s. Western North Carolina, same story. We've got pop up storms through Friday, a better chance for some of those afternoon thunderstorms over the weekend, but you'll still find plenty of dry time each day. Coming up next in news for your health, a reminder about how brushing your teeth is important for your overall heart health. Plus, when it comes to the hot weather, experts say what you do before you leave the house could help you beat dehydration.
Good afternoon, I'm Carol Clark. In news for your health, researchers suggest skipping a usual part of the bedtime routine could increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. Scientists from a university hospital in Japan were behind the study released last week in the journal Nature Scientific Reports. They analyzed the oral hygiene habits of over 1,600 hospital patients who were at least 20 years old. The researchers say they found that only brushing in the morning after waking up was not enough to maintain good health and that brushing teeth at night is important for lowering cardiovascular disease risk. They noted not brushing teeth before bed could increase the risk of periodontal disease and tooth decay. And dental diseases have consistently been associated with increased risk of heart disease. We've been dealing with plenty of hot days and you may find yourself having trouble concentrating or feeling fatigued. That could be a sign of dehydration. Some other signs include headache, muscle aches and cramps and nausea. Dehydration happens when the body loses more fluid than it takes in. Doctors say to help prevent dehydration, it's important to hydrate before heading out into the heat. You'll also want to avoid caffeine and alcohol, or at least cut them back. When working outside on a hot day, it's best to drink eight ounces of water every 15 to 20 minutes. It becomes a medical emergency if you start to feel confused or disoriented. If one notices that they're starting to have any mental status changes or neurologic changes, that means you're moving into heat stroke. That is an acute life-threatening condition, and that needs to be addressed in your local closest emergency department. Dr. Waters says dehydration can progress to heat stroke, which can lead to organ failure or even death. So make sure you are drinking water before, during, and after activities in the heat. Chris, I guess we'll need those water bottles this week, won't we? Oh, certainly, as those feels like temperatures get up there to the mid-90s, even close to 100 degrees in some areas. But what you hope for some of these showers. These are strong, though. We got lightning in Greenwood, Abbeville, Elbert counties. I'll track these and more in just a few minutes. Local breaking news. This is WIFF News 4 at 4.
In Commitment 2024 news, President Joe Biden is scheduled to visit South Carolina tomorrow. Our Taggart Howe joins us in the studio this afternoon with more details about the president's visit. Taggart, what have you learned? Well, Janie Gabrielle, President Biden will be in Columbia tomorrow and his visit comes less than a week after former President Donald Trump held a rally in Pickens. The president is expected to promote Bidenomics and his commitment to manufacturing. He said Bidenomics is rooted in building the American economy from the middle out and bottom up and that the trickle down approach has failed the middle class. Biden will highlight a new manufacturing partnership between Enphase Energy and Flex in West Columbia. That's an electronics manufacturing company. The South Carolina Democratic Party said today it is excited to welcome Biden and also called out Republicans for voting against his economic agenda. Republicans taking credit for federal dollars they voted against isn't unique to South Carolina. It's happening across the country, and it's a testament to how successful the Biden-Harris administration has been. And we spoke with Republican lawmakers today ahead of the visit who said Biden's economy is worse for South Carolinians and Americans. They cite interest rates and inflation. We'll have more from them and from the Democratic Party here in South Carolina in the next hour. Jane. Tag it good. We'll see you then. Well, hot and muggy persist, but then again, it is July. Oh, and so we get some possible storms too, mm -hmm. and some confirmed storms in some parts of our area. Let's give you this live look outside from our Asheville sky camera right now. Looking all right in the mountains right here. Chief Meteorologist Chris Justice, what are you seeing outside? Yeah, live Super Doppler before picking up on some storms to our south right now in Abbeville, Greenwood counties. We've got a lot of lightning with these as well. And honestly, it's one of the situations where they're not really moving a whole lot, so they have to kind of rein themselves out. We're seeing that happen across Elbert County. County where you're slowly clearing out a few rumbles of thunder remain along the South Carolina state line into Abbeville Greenwood County covered up with some heavy rain right now. Cokesbury, uh, it's just rain, no storms, but south toward Troy and Kirksey Bradley. You bet lots of lightning. In fact, dozens of lightning strikes here in the past 30 minutes. You go toward the northern part of the upstate Lawrence due west north into Greenville County. Just some rain moving through right now. Not much a consequence other than helping out the temperatures which have been so hot and so humid. Humid. It's 83 in Greenville, but it's 78 in Anderson. A rain cooled 72 in Greenwood. We'll take it right. It's 80 in Asheville. Over the next 12 hours, we'll see those temperatures slowly cool down. With it being so humid, I can't rule out a rumble of thunder or a stray shower this evening. 10, 11 o'clock, even close to midnight. Most of us stay dry, though, and going throughout the next couple of days, temperatures do warm up. I do see a temperature change in the near future, though. I'll map that out for you and show you the long-term outlook coming up in just a few minutes. We have some breaking news to tell you about in Greenwood County. Deputies are investigating a deadly shooting. The coroner says that 27 year old Zancurius Hurley was shot at least once. He died in the emergency room this afternoon. Deputies have not said where that shooting happened or if there are any suspects yet in that case. Right now, cleanup is underway in Piedmont after officials say a dump truck hit a house. As you can see from this picture, it appears the damage is mainly to the garage area of the house. This house is on Cravens Creek Court. No word on what led up to this crash, but officials on site tell us no one thankfully was hurt. In Spartanburg, two facilities are in the works as part of a massive industrial complex in a park. This is a rendering of two buildings going up off Interstate 85 near the Greer Inland Port. It will have more than 2 million available square feet. Architects McMillan, Pasden, Smith designed the industrial park and it's being developed by Graystar Real Estate Partners, LLC. A groundbreaking for the first phase of that project recently took place. No word on any tenants yet, but construction is expected to continue through October of 2024. Students falling behind grade level in the summertime is what teachers refer to as the summer slide. And teachers tell us it has gotten worse in the past few years. If you envision a slide, if you're at the top of it at the end of the school year and you just start to go down it gradually, you're automatically below where you were, but not because anything happened, but because nothing happened. So it's just the, the fact that if you do nothing, it's a natural progression and it happens. Teachers say there are so many easy and free things, though, that parents can do over the summer to help prevent the summer slide. Coming up on WYFF News 4 at 5 o'clock, we will walk you through some summer activities that promote learning. 
While there are four more weeks to enjoy the sounds of summer lakeside at Furman University. Furman's Music by the Lake series invites you to bring a chair, a picnic dinner, and a blanket to the amphitheater to enjoy some live music. Each Thursday night at 7.30, families and friends make this their gathering spot, just as they have been doing for more than 50 years now. In fact, the first year flute player has been playing the summer concert series from the very beginning. First chair flute player now sits in a section with someone who saw her perform as a youngster, sixth or seventh grade. And now that youngster is an adult who plays in the band as well and is inspiring her own nieces and nephews to play music. So I think that's pretty spectacular. And the last four concerts in the series are still ahead of us. We've put those dates and the performances there on your screen. And if the weather is bad, concerts will be held inside McAllister Auditorium on campus. Again, the concerts are free to attend. They begin at 7.30 Thursday evenings. If you'd like more information on Furman's Music by the Lake series, just head to our website at WYFF4.com. Happening this month at the Peace Center in downtown Greenville, a bit of a history lesson with a very modern twist. The new musical Six tells the story of the six wives of the English King Henry VIII from each wife's point of view. Henry VIII was the King of England in the 1500s and is best known for his six marriages. Two of the wives were divorced, two were beheaded, including you'll know the name Anne Boleyn, one died and one outlived the king. Six features an all-woman cast and an all-woman band. The musical won the Tony Award for Best Original Score. We spoke with the woman who plays Catherine Parr, the wife who outlived the king. She says Six is not a typical Broadway show. The show sort of imagines a world in which all of his wives got together, formed a pop girl group, and wrote an album about their experience with him. Um, in which they each get the opportunity to tell their story um, about their experience with Henry VIII, all sort of competing for who had it worst. She says Beyonce and Ariana Grande's stadium tours are inspiration for this show. It's 80 minutes long with no intermission, and she says you don't have to be an expert in history to enjoy this show. You can see six at the Peace Center in downtown Greenville from July 18th through the 30th. That looks fabulous. It